Oh, hi everyone. This is Glenn again, and thank you for being with Board Games and Bourbon, the name of my channel. But I'm the only one who does it, so you may as well just say you're with Glenn. Well, anyway, today I want to talk about Sky Towers, which is a card game that is actually uh, more complicated than you're going to think when you first look at it. At first, it looks very childlike, um, Studio Ghibli uh, feel like, you know, Castle in the Sky kind of art because there's a lot of clouds, um, very genteel, and actually very interesting art uh, by the creator Charles Ward, who also made the game. And it looks like it's going to be an easy breezy thing, and it can be if you make the right choices in the game with rule sets and complications. But there's actually a lot of confounding factors that can make it a gamer's game. And that's one of the cool things about sharing it with you. Okay, so what do you do in the game? Uh, the game plays one to four players. And what you're trying to do in the game is you're trying to take cards that range from one to 10, and you're trying to make towers of 21. Now, there's more than just doing that. You're gonna draw, you can put down, you can demolish your castle and take the cards back into your hand. There's no hand limit. But every card you play has an implication. Every bonus that you reach can be stolen by somebody else. Every tower you build can affect the people to your left or your right. Those are the things that makes it kind of fun and interesting. So specifically what happens is when you're putting down cards, like I said, they have different numbers and the different numbers are gonna have ramifications. If you have a number 10 in your hand, 10 can only be put onto the ground. It has to be the base of a castle. If you have a number one, a number one can only be put on top. Ones can only go on ones, kind of like the needle of a big tall skyscraper or something like that. If you play a seven, the seven uh, is gonna make a card come out into the center, kind of like a market that anyone can use. You're giving extra options to other people. And, and when you build your tower of 21, the 21 is not what scores you the points. Completing the tower is not what you score. The different cards that you put inside your towers has kites on them. The kites are what scores. And depending on how you built your tower, you might get bonus cards. And those bonus cards have kites as well. Like if you use the sevens, the seven cards themselves have no kites. But you, it, there's a card that says is if you use three of them, three times seven is 21, you get the bonus card for that, and that has five kites on it. Uh, if you use a one, two, three, four, five, and six card to build, you get a bonus card over here that has three kites on it, okay? But there's also an order, because uh, one of the rules is that if you build your ca uh, tower early, you get that card, but if someone builds it after you, they get that card. So there's a little bit of a timing element there. You have to look at where the bonuses are around the table, if you can get it, when you want to go for it. So you're competing against making your tower now versus where the bonuses are and what you're trying to go after. Also, to the player to the left and to the right, whatever your top card is on your tower facing that person, they cannot build with. They cannot build on the right either. So you might just build poopy towers. You can build as many towers as you want, but put you know, some junk towers on the end just to mess with the other people. That's kind of fun as well. In solo mode, uh, you are trying to build your towers and trying to see how many you can build before a tower, uh, time runs out. And overall, in all the modes, although I would say this is more multiplayer uh, than um, the Oniram world, I got the feeling of the card play in it that I was playing kind of like a more easy breezy Oniram, uh, but maybe better in, than Oniram in a way because I wasn't endlessly shuffling my hand of cards, which I've played Oniram, oh, easily a thousand times, maybe multiple thousands of times when I first got into it, but shuffling the deck, I was so glad they came up with the app. Uh, but here you don't have to do that, which is a nice change of pace. So if you're into card games, um, and I should add too, you can play with the young ones. I have a, when I started playing this, it was with a three-year-old, now four. And uh, to share it with her, we were still trying to get to 21. I just took out the effects because one, she can't read the effects cards, but there was far too many complications. But we still had a fun time trying to get to 21 and trying to figure it out. Even as she was trying to figure out her 21, I was actually trying to figure out how to get to my 21, <laughs> playing with like card restrictions in my hand. Normally when you play, there's no card restrictions. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it was, it was far more rewarding than I thought. Easy breezy game that I would probably say does play 
more for younger people, but that doesn't mean it's not challenging. Challengingly, appropriately challenging. So that game there is Sky Towers. If you're into card games, I do recommend checking it out. The game is going to come, I don't know if it's sent from Japan, the game is uh, both in English and Japanese, uh, and you get that on the card. So there's a lot of fun in there for you. So anyway, if you have questions specifically about the rules, happy to add those answers to you uh, and provide them. And uh, until next time, be well. Talk to you soon.